understand what you're doing. Um, Mahmoud Abdul Rauf, former Chris Jackson, Denver Nuggets. You get what I'm saying? Back in the day, I understand. Outside of him, it was it was it was it was more. Like you said, your grandfather. You know, it was more. I understand that, but I just also understand those people that say, "Well, you're cashing those checks, man. You really don't have a solid ground to stand on." That's people who just want to use <clears throat> um, an excuse. Just like, basically what he's pointing out is this. We can march all day. You can have LeBron, Dwayne Wade, Chris uh, Paul make a speech and everything like that. But when he sat down, he made an impact. And everybody's talking about it. And he's making people realize that it might be more stuff going on. And it might be handled a different way after seeing these police doing what they do, and then they get you, paid do vacations. You, do you think his timing is perfect right now? Yeah, his timing is perfect. Just think about it. We didn't even start the NFL yet, and everybody watches the NFL. How do you get people's attention? Get get where everybody watches. Everybody, what, football is the number one he sport said in America, right? He said it's not about right? attention, though. He said it's not about attention. It's about those that don't have a voice. But how you Who get, are oppressed in a system that don't understand? Well, he got the right pr- uh, platform. Let me put it that way. He not he might not go after like he's saying attention, and I don't think he is neither. I don't think this is a publicity for him. But he picked the right place and time, and the you right. You know, platform. people are gonna play it like that, right? Oh yeah. You know that that's what the media is gonna do. That's what they do. They're gonna play it like you know he had a bad season last year, after coming off a good season the season before. Now going into the NFL season, this punk little kid with all the tattoos, and now he got big hair and a beard, and consciously he's woke. They're going to paint that picture out for him. Yeah, don't and I wonder, are people intelligent enough to figure that out? Yeah. That's what I want to know. But do they realize or do they know that all this stuff started happening recently? I mean, it's been happening, but it's getting to a point where it's being seen constantly during this year. And... He's letting you know, hey, it's happening too much now. And I'm doing this right now to let you know what's going on. So they can say what they want to say about, oh, yeah, he didn't play great last year. Uh, He dropped off last year or something like that. That's not what this is about. But it's always uh, a counter reaction to a reaction. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know. I, I just hope he's mentally prepared and ready to take on the backlash and, and, and I mean the mental scrutiny that's going to come. Then I hope he gets the support from his Welcome fellow Welcome to LeBron's world. But you're going to get the racial side of it. <laughs> you know, and I remember you saying that you talked to one guy and they were saying that he was not the right form of quote unquote superstar or type super athlete to even have a ground to stand on even say something like this like it would have had some more significance behind a bigger more high profile athlete am I, am I quoting it right or am I saying it right what he was saying was he knows he's gonna get blackballed because you know Kaepernick is not um, per se the Tom Brady of the NFL or Kaepernick's like from that. Milwaukee right yeah he's from Milwaukee Kaepernick you know uh, he's a decent quarterback but he's not elite you have to have somebody elite that's going to have even a bigger uh, prime example Muhammad Ali world heavyweight champion of the world skills were unmatched but when he did what he did it made a profound impact and they tried to take something from him and try to blackball him but it couldn't be done because they know that he was boxing basically while well, they gave him the shakes you see <laughs> Yeah, kind of threw you for a loop on that one, didn't I? But anyway, uh, we're going to get back more to the Colin Kaepernick thing, man. You know, uh, Smokey D went out there on the streets and got a few interviews down at the Greyhound bus station. Man, I want y'all to take a listen. We're going to take a listen, then we're going to give our interview. I mean, not our interview, our, inter- our opinions. Somebody, uh, information about Colin Turn down uh, a little bit so y'all can hear. I've seen that Callan Kaepernick, San Francisco's 49ers quarterback, said he wouldn't stand up for the flag because it was 
and the national anthem because of Smoke the, uh, the, the oppression of black people and the treatment of blacks in this uh, American country. What, what do you say about that, Chris? I say black. I won't say if they ask me that he's black. It is a disgrace to the, to the black people. You're right, 100% right. It's a real disgrace to us as people as a whole. Now, how long you been feeling this way? A long time, a long time. I was taught as a kid not to say first leads to the flag, none of that. I wouldn't do none of that when I was a kid. So I understand everything having an exam. So let me ask you this question. You in an arena with about 60,000 people when the national anthem comes on and everybody stands up and you only want to sit and everybody stand at you. Would you feel uncomfortable? No. No, I wouldn't. Because I'm, I'm sitting down and I'm proving the fact, proving something that I believe in. So no, I would not feel uncomfortable. And I would stay sitting down. Now, what would you say to the people who would, you know, chastise you about that? Saying that, you know, you're in America and that you should show respect. Well, what do you say to them? Tell them to go back and do their history. Look it up. Do their history first before they criticize me. You ain't come back and let me know what's going on. That was an interview. Smokey D head down there with a brother Chris down there by the Greyhound bus station. What 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 you think about some of his views on everything and the questions you asked him? Yeah, knowing Chris and he been through a lot. He been through all the racial profiling and everything like that. And he he feels like how Kaepernick feels. You know, why should I stand up and everything when this doesn't rub me? Whatever you talking about, the lyrics and the national anthem doesn't really represent how I feel or what I've been going through. You know, I don't feel free. I don't feel like, you know, I got the liberties like supposedly Americans do. So, I mean, I understood where he was coming from. Right, right. So, I definitely, um, and he was always talking about this anyway, so I definitely had to catch up with him and talk to him about it. Right, right. We got we got more in the interview. We're going to play that down the line and everything else. Uh, Smokey D went out there. Yeah, he, he got quite a few interviews, so we got a nice little show of opinions of people out there that we're going to get more involved as we go out there. I'm going to do more interviews and get more subjects. He's going to do the same thing, and, you know, we're just going to spread it out, man. We got another one uh, coming up, man, and I want y'all to let me know. Like I say, y'all can go to Bring Your A-Game Sports Talk Facebook page. I forgot for a minute. I was going to say website. <laughs> you go to website, too. You go to Facebook page. You know, let's bring your A-game sports talk. And, uh, you know, y'all can get y'all opinions and y'all views on on the, on the uh, podcast that we're doing right now. Uh, we got somebody else coming up. Let me see. Uh, this is another interview. Hope y'all enjoy it. Listen up. I got a working man right here named Brian. Works for Miller's Transportation. I got a question for him about what Callan Kaepernick did. Uh, did you hear about what he did recently? No. Probably kissed his muscles. He always does. No, no, it's not that. He didn't stand up for the flag in the national anthem because he felt that it was oppression. Well, come on, man. Uh, go ahead and express yourself. Well, how do you feel about that? I feel he's a punk. I always thought he was a punk before that. Now he's literally a punk. Why is that? I mean, why do you feel he's a punk? Well, if he's not going to stand up for his flag, for one, and he's all about Colin Kaepernick and not about anybody else. But he said he did it because he felt that the flag represented oppression against black people. This is what he said. I'm just repeating it. And, you know, I'm just much repeating it. homework. Everybody's saying homework. What, what do you mean by homework? He doesn't know what the flag's about, then. So, you know. Just being an American, that's all. What is an American being? I mean, explain that to me. What? What is it? Uh, like, what's your definition of being an American? Being born in this country and raised in this country and taught the rights in this country. That's all I know. And I mean, getting the, the depth of you, man. I mean, yeah, getting the depth about as far as what you mean by the rights for this country. He was born here, right? Or was he? 
Yeah, he was born here. I believe he was. That's all he needs. He's an American. He's not an African American. He's not a Latino American. He's just an American. So let me ask you this. Uh, where do you think he's getting this from? As far as being saying how uh, African Americans are treated or like blacks American. Like I say, that's... A, I don't know where he gets it from. I never think like that. So I don't know why how people think. Another interesting interview right there. The one that the homie Smokey D is. That was who again? Uh, I was just driver named Brian. He works for Miller Transportation. Uh, I see him always up there and everything like that. I mean, he is a Caucasian, but he, he's pretty cool and everything like that. But He's I a Caucasian, but he's cool. <laughs> I have white friends. <laughs> Associates. <laughs> Associates. No, but... I well, never have any problem. He's never been uh, racial, but I kind of figured that he was going to have a different answer than Chris did. So that's why I stepped up to him, and he kind of felt uncomfortable answering questions. If you noticed, I mean, is I mean, you got to understand he's he is going to be put on the radio. He is going to be tagged and marked. So I mean, it is what it is. This is opinion radio. This is First Amendment radio. Be first, first and foremost, anything. So I'm not gonna, you know, hold nothing against him because how he feel is how he feel. But I would, I mean, really want him to get into more in depth. You know, right, you're right. saying you got rights and everything. What rights uh, do Americans have? I understand. You say something, you should be able to elaborate on them. Yeah, I dig. I dig. You know, want to play the next interview? Or you want to get some music and come back to it? I mean, just the one thing I just want to elaborate on is. Like, we'll get some music and go ahead and talk. I'm going to find some music and we're going to come back, you know, give us more to talk know, about. Go ahead. say, oh, yeah, uh, you know, he's American. He's got to be standing up and everything like that. Well, if this case, then, how come it's always been, well, race has always been a part of this country for some reason? And you can't be blind to the fact that there's racism out there. And if somebody feels a certain way and you're not in their shoes, you can you might not know how it feels, but you can sympathize with something like that. Not just because uh, he's like, oh, he's a punk. Like, he's standing up for what he believed in. I'm like, won't you do the same? Well, he's not standing up for his uh, for, Well, for he, it's, it's, it's not for what he stand up for. And that's the, how the mindset of a lot of people is. If you don't stand with me and what I understand, well, then you're a punk. You know, that's how a lot of people think. It's fucked up, but that's how a lot of people think, man. Yeah, I'm gathering that a lot, you know. But, you know, at all, you have to think about it like this. Like I, like we said at the beginning, this is his choice. It's like, okay, we're making a fuss over nine. His timing is right. And I hope he take this and I hope he runs with it. And I hope he listens. Because there is certain things that outside of just saying something and not doing something, there's a bigger beast you have to conquer outside of the NFL. You get what I'm saying? Are you ready, really ready, prepared to fight a whole system that's naturally built to bring you apart? You think they don't cross their T's and dot their I's? Almost doubt, most definitely. That's why I say, man, you got to be prepared to be blackballed. You know? And I mean, we, we talking about uh, NFL where they basically ban somebody from dog fighting. I mean... That's not the best thing in the world, but you got to figure that worst. NFL is a shield that contributes to America a lot. They got their own fucking holiday. <laughs> I mean, sports got their own holiday, man. Um, none except for the NFL. Exactly. So my thing is like, you, I, I, I dig. Don't be scared, man. Strategically. If you're going to take this down and stand for it strategically, do it right. And don't go off impulse and instinct of what you see. Make sure what you do is based off your own experiences because that's how people are going to judge you. Not off other people's experience because you don't know the path that they walk in order to get where they at. This is my thing to Colin Kaepernick. When you say strategically, uh, what do you mean by that, though? Strategically mean like okay i mean i know the definition you're gonna have to know how to play the media you're gonna have to know how to talk to them because they're gonna ask you certain questions to corner you in to make you look like a fool the media is full of a lot of characters that's built a lot of different ways that's trained to do a lot of different things to either make you or break you 
are you mentally ready for that? 